this video is going to be a how to position video. Uh, I get a lot of questions on what positioning actually look like and what's the equation and math behind e positioning and having good positioning. So I'm going to go through each role and explain how, where you should be standing and why you should be standing there. Um, if you guys want to support me, you guys can buy the founders pack through my nexus for smite two and all their gods uh, and all their upcoming gods as well. Appreciate it. So we're going to start with ADC. So first let's look at this scenario, right? So, the first thing you should look at to understand positioning, right, is where am I and where are they? So my team is, is look, I don't know. I, don't, I forgot this game already. So just based off what I'm looking, looking at is I'm alone for about six, six to ten seconds, right? That's a pretty fair equation. If you can give me an advanced game a chance. Um, so I have, I need to buy about six seconds of time or seven seconds where I know that I'm not, that where I can't die or lose relics. So I know I have a good position, right? So I have good wards. So I know that they're all here, right? Based off the math here is I, I know they're all at green because they're chasing me, right? So, and I have tower, right? So I can peel back this way and feel confident. So what I'm doing here is baiting. I'm baiting my life and dishing out damage so my team can collapse here. So they give up pretty fast there. They give up pretty fast because they realize that there's a hurt behind them. And now I have an opening. This is called an opening to dish damage and really play aggressive. I root first. My build isn't the greatest to hit tanks, but that's what's in front of me here. And I don't have like blink or anything to dive backline. So I'm going to pressure the Ares here without giving up positioning, right? Because like, the, for example, the right character to go on is Marty and Thor with this build. And, but I'm not going to give up my positioning to do that right now, right? I'm not going to dash in and try to go on the Marty. That would be the suicide. I see a lot of hunters do this. So you want to play... I'm going to hit this. And then, so now the opening has, the opening is there for me, right? The Ares backs up, the Thor backs up, Nox is here. So now this fight is wide open for me. So I'm going to hit, look to hit this guy, even though this guy's right in front of me, right? This guy can hit right now. I'm going to target him. Why? He's the carry Two, He's worth the most gold. Level 11 Ares gives very little three. My build is better versus him. So all the, all those three things that I talked about are the reason that I'm going to push forward here to go on this Marty. And that's when I dash, right? Because I see the opening. He then Marty ults to respond. And then and then see how I don't just keep chasing the Marty, right? He used ult for my dash. And I know without my dash, I'm a little bit unsafe. So I'm going to just, just stay here and, and trade with the Ares. Nox is now TPing. This is something small, has nothing to do with positioning, but something you can always do. I switch to green stance, death toll, and crimson claws, and try to get some extra sustain in this fight now that I'm poked a little bit. Something you can do. And now I look back at the fight. Ares is free for me. I don't go in first, right? I want my Herc to tank the tower so then I can commit. I don't want to take free tower shots. I focus tower while the Herc tanks for a bit. I call for the Gold Fury. Thor hits a nice stun. This is another quick tip that I can give you. Is you so there's I have vision on their whole backline, right? Meaning I don't need to beads this, right? I know Marty has no ult. I know Nox just got here, and I know Posh are not in position to follow up this stun. So I'm not gonna beads it. That's another quick tip for knowing how to use relics. I'll probably come out with that video soon. Thor's up in the air. And I, I get kind of left here. Everybody kind of leaves. So I'm out of position right here, right? Because everybody kind of bails. And so that kind of exposes me in terms of positioning with Thor being in the air. Right now, I'm just juking, trying to juke the Thor ult. So he misses. Pretty bad miss. Juke the wall. Reposition again. How, so if, you, if you've actually paid attention, how many times have I repositioned this fight? About three to four times already. A lot of people don't ever even think about repositioning one time. They just keep attacking or keep going or, or, or just always running. Repositioning and, re and reanalyzing where the fight actually is is very important for you to make consistent decisions. So here I'm playing, I have double relics here. I am frontlining though, right? 
Because, like, look, my whole team is behind me, but my Herc is low. My Sylvanas is low. I'm kind of 70% HP, and we're baiting this fight. We have really good vision. No Thoro, no Mardio. It's a 4v5. So I feel confident in this fight. Good Kraken. That's beads. So I drop ults. Posh ult gets dropped. I just the Posh ult. That's the fifth reposition in just this one clip. I get hit by Nox ult, so I don't really do that much damage. So I reposition again. And now we're going to look at a completely different fight. You got to start up the surrender to make sure you're in a real rank game. Um, here I have a pre really good opening. So what's the first thing you notice, right? Everybody is already kind of low, right? Two pe one person's really low. Marty used ult. These are resources that my brain is downloading or just keeping on file. So I know how aggressive I can play, right? So here I have almost double overshield. So what is this? This is Crimson Claw passive pro plus uh, prot, prot buff. So that's why my shield is so big. But that also is another factor that encourages me to play more aggressive with my positioning. So here I go. But Pwash shows up. And I know this is a squishy. With my crit build, I can almost two-tap him. So I'm going to switch aggro onto him. I miss the root. Dash. Hit some nice autos. Miss a couple. He's dead. I try to ult, but he had dash and blink, so that's unfortunate. So this is kind of a free fight for me, right? So that's why I'm positioning, just looking for the best target to kill, because I have not been casted on. I dash to close distance. Marty uh, doesn't have ult from the last fight, and it ends up being just a free fight. So if you compare this fight to the last fight, the last fight, there was a lot of repositioning. I never really got to just take like blow through the fight, right? A lot of people try to treat every fight the same way and they fight the same way every time they show up. You have to adapt to the situation. So here, this fight was free, right? This fight was this fight was pretty free for me. I was barely casting out. Paw shows up late. I cast on him. We kill him right away. Nox blink dashes. Marty used ult early. Thor was low. A lot of good positive things that allowed me to just play how I wanted there compared to the last fight. Not finding an opening is okay sometimes. It happens. So now there's only two people here. I'm trying to get my passive. They end up stealing it because I kind of switched aggro there. At this point, one, another uh, quick tip that I'll that I'll give you um, is when you when you lose an FG, you have to chase them out at all costs. You have to get picks. Every pick is high value. They stole FG, so their their goal is to try to get out and conserve the buff to then siege. So you have to chase everything. So obviously it's it's pretty it's pretty obvious, but sometimes people just get uh, sometimes people get like frustrated and just stop what they're doing. Uh, level is also a huge consideration in that fight. I mean, we were both 18, I think. I don't, I don't remember in, the, in that posh fight. I think I was 17 to 17. So as an ADC, you should always be hitting structures, right? I'm positioning. Like, a lot of ADCs run past this, right? What happens when an ADC runs past the structure? I'm pretty sure I was 17. I'll look at it again, though. Oh, it might have been 20. Oh, yeah, it was 20. 17 in the last fight. I actually really wanted to talk about that. All right, so here we're sieging, right? We have FG for three minutes and, and some. So a lot of ADCs run past this. Your job as an ADC, you're the highest consistent DPS on structures. So you should always be hitting structures unless you know you're going to wipe. So here, I, a lot of hunters just run past and start hitting people. And then eventually they start you start getting uh taking too much damage from towers and phoenixes and then you try to retreat and guess what there's a tier two cutting off your exit and then it squeezes everyone into one way and that's where mages marty aposh store all take advantage so hit structures moral of the story once tower's done i look for an opening look for a route after i get hit with a marty 2-1 i respect it reposition because i know thor's still alive I look for something to heal off. It doesn't look like there's anything to heal off. Thor looks like he's taking advantage, winning the fight. So even when I'm turning my back, I'm not really... Lo I'm looking at my map and looking at the resources. Like, because the minimap reveals so much, right? Like, 
Thor was here and then here. That means he Thor ulted. So I'm accounting no Thor ult. So I can maybe fight on the back end. So things of that nature. And I think I just fully disengage. I keep looking for buffs to heal off, but this fight is washed. Like even if I heal this fight, we can never fight here. So here we're going for a siege again. We're in a 4v5 scenario. So Thor's in the air. How do I know? So it's f simple. He's been standing still for about three seconds on the mini map. That I, so I know he's in the air. So you're, you you should see me wrap right side. This has to do with positioning. But positioning this pos this positioning uh, doesn't come from you know just random. No, there there's information, right? I should wrap to the right side here because I know Thor can't land here. His his max range is like here. So it's all about like observing, analyzing, and then using the information that you analyze or observed and try to make good decisions off them so whatever he lands on sylvanas or whatever i get i take the the structure aries goes for a blink ult i hear him blink from behind so i dash away make sure i want to hold on to my beads i'm trying to get some death temper procs here this fight doesn't look very good we have one dead fg's on in one minute i'm looking i'm repositioning looking for an opening see if they over chase i say set, set up an ambush here we might not end up getting it. I look for an opening. Look to root up Wash. I'm just looking for stun. I have no dash, so I can't do anything too crazy. I get poked a good bit from a Wash, and then we just call. Yeah, it's completed. It's done. Now we're into a new fight. Let's talk about what this looks like. So this looks really bad from just first, uh, you know, first look. Herc is 20%. They're all massively grouped. And so on is 70%, 20%. I'm full, but I, but it doesn't look very pretty. So the first thing I observed was that Ares was a little bit pushed up compared to the rest of the team, right? Because Wukong was giving vision on them. So I know that I have time to commit on this guy. So we just one tap the Ares. But I know, but I know this corridor is Nox, Upwash, Marty, and Thor's wet dream. So, what do I do? I don't give it to them. A lot of people get that kill and they just run straight into everything. No, you still have to look at the fight and and when when you're able to read, okay, they have no relics, they're running away, they have no ults, okay, I'm going to run it down. But no, I, I don't. I get the kill and I reposition. Keyword. I let them show. I wait for my front line to give me vision. You see? Marty, Marty Alpwash's wet dream right here. I'm not going to give it to them. I see two abilities go out, I ward over the wall, and I look for my opening, and now I'm here. You see, you see the big, like, that's a big difference from, like, uh, you know, whatever, me and, and, like, your average Joe and Diamond. Your average Joe and Diamond is killing that Ares and saying attack, 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 and running it down. No, you, you, you still have to be very patient. They kind of forgot about me, if you, if you see it, because I had good positioning, they forgot about me. I also used line of sight there to just stay hidden, and then once Savannah sets me up or I see a good setup, then I go. He almost gets two shot, two crits. A posh ult comes out. I root, that's Aegis. I know I don't have to finish that kill. I don't need to dive. I don't need to kill him. I, I'm not playing Call of Duty. I then reposition again after posh ult and try to find a flank to see if I can go for more. I call FG. It looks like they're over committing. I see Nox ult. I went for the dash. I want to help, but I know Nox has no dash. So there was two targets there, right? Nox and Thor. Once I see this, Nox is guaranteed the right person to go on here. So that's why you see me dash. I look at him a little bit, but I'm like, obviously, this is not worth This is the right play. I just want to finish him. Even though I know he's won, he finished him. I'm calling FG, even though we're kind of low. Thor hammers to me, and I beads and two tap him. So let's talk about sieging and positioning as an ADC when sieging. We've had a couple sieges, but we'll go for the last one. So let's look at the map first. Remember, map first, that's always first. That will allow you to understand what you need to do. So we have double Oni fire waves coming in right now, right? This is actually bad positioning, right? Why? You're going to see right now. So obviously Ares wants to look for an ult here and pull my beads for free, meaning Thor gets a free fight. I should have known that this was going to happen and repositioned, but I did not. So I got punished. I should lose my beads here. 
but I get double value because store lands at the same exact time. I dash, reposition. So we get the Phoenix. I lose my beats. It's store air result. And double fire waves are running, rushing in from mid right. So I reposition backwards and observe the fight. We get one more pick. I try to just stay here and trade. Why? Because I'm low health. Am I going to kill anyone here? Probably not. But what am I doing? I'm confusing them. By positioning aggressive when their structures are getting sieged, they have to make a decision. Is this guy actually trying to fight me? Or is this guy just making a distraction? Make them think. If I'm just standing back here by back camps, they don't, they don't have to think, right? They just say, oh, guys, just defend. I mean, everybody left. By being here, I'm making them second guess themselves and, what, and you know, making them think. He gets her jump. I look for the grab. And now he's left alone. Gets shredded. Titans one shot now. All over the wall. Try to get the finish. GG's. So you're able to see at least a couple different fight a uh, couple different fights, a couple sieges, a couple fire giants to understand, okay, this is what I should be doing as ADC. So let's talk about support, because it's com it's very, very, very different. So support positioning in this clip. Let's break it down here. So I start the OBJ. That's guaranteed, right? You want your tank tanking it. You're, you're building prots for a reason, right? Why would I give it to my Ravana? Even if he builds a shield off autos, no, no. You are a tank. You're building two tank items for one reason, to tank. So make sure you're... I also could have used my turtle to save, conserve more health, but I wanted more DPS here. Two people show, right? And I'm going to give you guys a, a, a nice little tip here. Two people show. Kukulin, pretty basic. He's solo laning. It's 30 minutes in. No reason he should be on this side. Gilga, mid. Meaning what? Eset is, is, is probably behind him. Why? Because Eset wants to get to this mid wave. So Gilga being here, I kind of can assume that Eset is behind him. Because why would she be in the jungle? Right? Well, she's going to do green. So I can account for two people. So that is a quick little tip that I can give you. If the jungler is clearing mid, the mid, the, the mid is probably somewhere behind on his way. He's not going to be in the jungle or somewhere else. So that's a, a, another good read that you guys can learn. I bet you this E-set will show mid in a second. Coos and shows, right? So right, I'm going to give you guys another crazy little tip about shot calling in MOBA. Based off this Gilga's next move, I am going to know what their shot call is. Okay. So, Kuzin shows that we're a goal here right now, 50%. If this Gilga moves right, that means they're calling to defend it. If this Gilga goes left, they're calling to give it up. So, here he goes. He's playing chill, right? He's kind of just staying around and clearing up the minions, meaning they don't really care. Meaning, Kuzembo sh should be pretty alone. And, I told, like I said, Ise was behind him. You see how I could assume that? I've never, I have not watched this game. I forgot this game even existed. But, so now let's talk about the positioning after the Gold Fury. I shield, because I know I'm kind of low. Kuzin is okay right now. Big thing there is I, I CC chain. I then get pushed into their whole team and stay on the Kuzembo. I then, alright, this is the biggest thing in support. I then reposition again. Why? Because I'm not going to kill Kuzembo. I don't care. Even if I do kill Kuzembo over 20 seconds, it is such low value time. Like, the va it's such low value. I'm investing 20 seconds to kill a, Kuzem a level 9 Kuzembo. Very low efficiency. So after I push the Kuzembo out, that's, that's considered a TKO. I don't need to kill him. I, he's already out of the fight. He used ult. He used dash. He's 30%. So I reposition. And I come back in to see who I can peel. I look for... I get a double ult here. And I know I'm going to heal into a triple Ravana ult. Then get Issa. And, and I keep pushing through here. Get a pin. Look for some extra kills. Now the honor is hitting me, right? First thing you should do with support is when you're in trouble is... This is big. Run to your damage dealers. Not away. Please. All, I've seen many, many, many supports just run in a random direction when they are taking damage please run to your damage dealers 
your damage dealers are there to help you. They're going to throw damage over your shoulder, which is going to allow you to get peel and or turn the fight, which is really good. So first thing I do is I know I'm in trouble, right? There's four people on me. I tr run straight to the Marty. I could have ran to the Bologna, but I ran to the Marty. Why? He's closer. One, two. He does more damage than Bologna. They could call an ult. I, at this point, I'm just trying to juke panic mode and buying time for my three. I do get my three off then. And then what happens is they overchase me, right? They overchase me, and the fact that I ran to my team allows an opportunity like this. And I stay, I stay around because I'm still of value, right? I have blink, and my 3-2 are up soon. So I'm looking. I finish the Kuzin with the Bologna. Then I reposition to the left side. But I'm seeing if there's another opening, if they actually want to fight this. They should just run. If this was high level play, you just need no one can kill anyone here, right? The best thing best case scenario is could call and chases me out. I call the on her. I know we're playing for that. I then pin. Okay, so what am I doing as support right now? I could have backed already, right? But the thing is, is that this could call in. What, is, what, what would he prefer to be, be doing right now if anyone knows anything about macro and smite? It's hitting minions. He wants to hit minions. How do you get ahead? You hit minions. But instead, he's chasing at level 13 Erlang that he thinks he can kill. He might be able to, but I'm, kinda, I'm, I'm limit testing with him and making him chase me. He uses abilities, abilities on me, then Bologna kind of goes back in. I kind of stay around because this could call in. Could be crossing and getting to these double, this double wave here. Instead, he's trying to take mid wave. And I'm okay with him taking mid wave. Why? Because it's going to take away from the E set, which is already behind. So I stay here. I time for a little extra juice. Pin. Three. Get the shield. And he got baited. Right? So in just that one play of that Gold Fury, which was about one minute, maybe minute 20 seconds, there was so much value in that whole fight, right? I ended up, t I tank Gold Fury, get the, get the Gold Fury, then end up getting the, the Kuzin TKO, then turn around, get a two-man ult, we killed two, then end up baiting the guy, the where I think it was the Issa to chase me, Marty dumps damage. Then I go mid, it's just baiting, you're just baiting your whole life. And that was j just master class of support right there. So here I engage. Why? Kuzin's low. May I kill him? Probably not. But what I'm doing is I'm going to force this Issa to help him. As she does. I pop thorns. Look for an ult. Just trying to get some extra damage on him. They're going to try to engage on me here. And do you guys think they want to use those resources to poke me out? No, they prefer to use the two and the one and the wave. But instead, what does it do? So this is something that's deeper in Smite Macro is that you ha we I give my team pressure here. How do I give my team pressure here? What does that even mean? So by grabbing the whole wave, by going on the Kuzembo, my team insta-clears. And then, and then on top of that, not only do we insta-clear, but we make these guys use their clear on me. Which means they don't have the clear for the wave. Which means we have pressure and prio to Gold Fury and Beacon. This is this is a support creating opportunity, right? I could have just sat there and not hit Kuzin and not group the wave and not do any of this, but I'm constantly looking for a proactive play. No, you're good, Salamander. Yeah, So you see how the wave is still on them and the E set is not helping this Gilgo blinking in? It all like ascends from the same thing. He goes in for the play, he, he solo kicks this guy, but E set can't be here. Why? Because she's still clearing minions. He jumps in place, E set ult drops. I ult as a three man ult. Double pin. And they're using all their resources on the fifth. I mean, I'm level 15. I'm pretty fed at this point as Erlang. But I'm still the support. I build these items for this to happen. I love that this is happening. I'm actually owning, bro. Gilga, one shot, no ult. Issa, two, one shot, no ult. Honor starts to hurt me. 
Give him the jukes a little bit. I lose my Ravana, so now it's just time to survive. And there I reposition. Usually, sometimes, you know, people, just like I said, baiting is really important and making sure that you're getting a lot of value. People tend to overbait. If, you, if I die there, it's a bad death. Why? As support, usually, as support, usually, you don't mind dying, right? But in this particular spot, I do not want to die. Why? I'm worth a lot of gold. I'm level 15. These guys are 14. If I die, I'm actually giving up a lot of gold here. So I'm, I baited to my max potential here. But I might even stay around. But I don't want to die either. The Honor ends up being 1 HP. I know I can't catch him even with Blink 3 in, into Pin. Pin the Kuzin. That's his ult. He, he jumps in because he thinks he can kill me there. But I'm baiting my shield the whole time. Then I get stunned through the, uh, through the shield. I reposition again. But... But remember what I did there. I pulled the Kakol into three in there, right? Which forces him to be in a really shit spot that we might kill. The Gilgo's even back. So this is bad, actually, because now I have baited so long that the Gilgo is able to back and come back. So that this is, is, this is a clear overextension from me. Unless we were able to pick up another kill here, which I don't think we are. So I should back here. Okay. Well, look, so, I mean, this guy I'm willing to debate with because he, here I should just dip, but I have ult again with Pridwin, so I might try to do something. I come back around. If I didn't have ult here, I don't come back ever, but with ult, that's heal with Pridwin shield. Oh, that's a pretty ult. Hit a four man into a three man pin. They try to kill me. I shield into the east at all, which is a mistake, but There's I'm no so way. tanking. like a four man ult. Oh shit, that on her got sauced. And then he jumps in to try to kill me. Look, holy shit, I've been baiting forever. Even though this went a little bit away from positioning, I hope you guys still picked up a lot of information on how support should be played. That retro guy was going crazy. Alright, so... This is a good, um, you guys might have seen this on YouTube shorts or whatnot, but this is a good representation of how to use line of sight. A lot of people would just stand here. The fact that I'm standing off to the corner and not showing is what makes them confident enough to try to commit on this Bologna. When the Bologna ult comes, which ends up being a four, a four man, I then get, I'm able to get a five man blink ult. So when a fight is blown open like this, where you hit such good combos that you know the fight is over, as a support, it actually is really good to just keep chasing. Like, you, I know I don't need to peel anymore, right? This fight is pretty much won from such a beautiful combo between us two. So now I just look for the hard chase. He kicks me. But I think he's going to end up being out. I missed the pin. Okay. Now let's look at support. Look where I'm at compared to everybody else, right? My team is pretty much lagging behind a bit, but I'm already in the front, make trying to just force this guy's jump and make giving my team the biggest thing is giving my team information. I'm standing so in front of their team that I'm able to show, and we have really good vision on top of it that we know E sets up there. We know Kakolin's kind of alone, and it allows my team to play really far up and funnel. I don't ult there because it's not a good enough opening. I'm calling FG, I'm asking Bologna to tank it, because if they if they walk too deep, then it's done. So I say fuck it, I'll tank it, no problem. I'm really good at tanking it too with the lifesteal. So once it's at 30%, I drop it. Why? I don't do any damage to it. And my team can tank it because I know they're all full HP because I've been tanking it all. Right? So at 20%, I drop the objective and go help my team. Something you can do if you're, you know, if you know enough about fire pools. Thoughtful misses. Big to take that note, right? Because now we don't have Thoughtful. So my ult setup isn't that pretty anymore. So I come back and I'm like, oh shit, did we get the fire? Okay. Look to peel. He dies. Okay, should I go help on this Kakolin? Most probably. Because uh, my Thoth is all my damage. 
But then I end up get, like giving up on it for one second, and then I remember Gilga's flanking. And then I might all is late. So, we end up picking that guy off right away. There's more people coming. So I try to body block the honor, right? So what is the most damage? So someone that... This is what separates players in terms of how good they are. We kill this Gilga right, right away. And what's the first thing I'm looking at? Who's alive? Where can they be? They're not back here because I would have seen them on the minimap, right? Look at this trail of wards. So they're somewhere around here, right? So I know that there's a Kuzin and Anher and Iset somewhere in this jungle. One of them might have backed. I don't know. I see Kuzin. I see Anher. Damage dealer, tank. I go to stop him. But then I realize Anher's all the damage here. So then I just body block this guy. He then jumps because he knows he's going to get body blocked. And there's not much more I could do. I think I played that right. I didn't have any knockup immunity on my three because I didn't have my three. So... At this point, when four of us are dead and I'm an EFG support, what is my goal? My goal is to buy time. Why? Because I need to buy time so that if they kill me right here, right away, they can just siege and maybe get Phoenix for free. But if I buy time, then they're in a bad spot. So this is the reason I run to their base, right? The farther they are from my base, the longer it's going to take to push. Right? So that's why instead of running this way to my tower, I run them up. Because my death doesn't matter that much. And I bring the wave with me, which they should siege with. Kuzin keeps chasing. E set back, so we still get the bird. So little things like that affect my positioning. So let's talk about sieging as a support. I'm pretty low here. No relics. No ult. I do have EFG healing. I'm going to try to start tanking with shields. I realize I can't take too much damage here. I have to ult just for the heal and the mitts. We pop the on her. Pop another. 4v1 should be GG's here on, on the Titan. I just call for the end at least and my kill is all. Nice ult. Next is mid, and I'm actually showing one of the best characters in mid that really, really, really need positioning, right? So positioning as a mid is very important. You have to know what is your kill threat. What can kill you? Who can catch you, right? Can Geb catch me? Probably not, unless he has blink. So if he has blink, then I take notes. Okay, Geb is, Geb is kill threat to me. If in range to blink. So I now space from Geb. I find Geb. I look for Geb. So I understand where I can stand. Thanatos, very scary for me. Naja, very scary for me. Agni, very scary for me. So this is a very hard game to position in. Okay, so Geb is getting gone on, meaning he cannot blink ult me. He then gets stunned, but I actually make a mistake here in positioning. I walk too close. I don't need to be so close. I go to chain lining him, and I'm in range for the ult at the outer circle, but still there. Bad, bad positioning here. But there's a good play in this. I don't beads. Why? Because I see that they're all looking at Arachne, not me, right? This is very important. I'll probably make a video. I'll probably make a video on how uh, on how relics, how you should be using your relics and whatnot, because I think it's very important and really how you, uh, you know, separates the great players from the average players. But here I see these three are not looking at me, so there's no reason to beads here. So I hold my relics, but now I know they have no gebel. I hit another auto here, and then I know they have no rollout, and I don't know if Agni has dash, but I don't care. I'm gonna drop the all in the geb. I then hit that. And now I, I have beats for the Thana ult, but I know these guys are not in a good spot to follow up. Okay, my second positioning. Uh, I make a good play here, so I use all my damage. Boom, boom, boom. He calls Thana in the air. I beats it pretty fast. 
First thing I do is, what do I do? I run to the minions. Why? Because they can body block the scythe through me. I understood what was a threat there. Geb wasn't a threat anymore. No ult. Agni was on the run. Not a threat. Thana is the last threat. He, But I have beats for his ult, so that's canceled. And now all he has is scythe. And I have Aegis for it. But I prefer not to use Aegis. And use my surroundings to help me conserve my relics. You see how I just run straight behind the archers. And he actually does a really good play in... Uh, Swipes them before that, but then he was already dead. Oh my, they're all one shot. Fuck. Oh, we already There's a gold? <laughs> really far. Okay. This is a great fight off the bat. Why? Because this fight, they're committing hard on my Arachne, and Agni's already dead. So this is what we call a free fight for a mid. Being able to pick up that it's a free fight off the bat allows you to play more confident. I could have ages this all. Oh my god, I couldn't through. I had so much three procs there. And so usually as as a Zeus you're in trouble if the fight starts like this. I go for a chain lining and I do hit it, but I don't get too much value. And then I get ulted and scythe. This fight should be bad. But because I because I called out to myself that it was a free fight beforehand because I knew they used a lot of resources on, on Arachne and Agni's dead to begin with, I feel confident enough to play like this and not panic my relics because I know there's so many things down that I understand it's a free fight. So I play, I play like so. Like here, I, I just got Thana ulted and scythe. I'm half HP. You think as Zeus I'm running into this? All this damage and AoE? Well, yes, because I called that it was a good, a free fight, plus the Scotty's in right. Another, more information to take part oh of. Oh my god, I put in three. So here, I'm pulling a Gold Fury with Atlas. You see how I start backing up a little bit? That is important as a mid because, yes, we're trying to get the Gold Fury, but there's no reason for me to stand on top of it. I prefer to stand max range on my autos. They take it away. That's a really good positioning and spaced out. Imagine I didn't do that, right? Imagine I didn't do those three little mini steps backwards when I'm hitting that Gold Fury. I definitely get hit by that Get Ball and maybe even lose my beads. So the positioning was big there. I try to secure it with my three. It literally had one HP. Uh, Thana steals it. But I see everybody's looking at Arachne. So this is probably a really good ult. Opportunity. And then get Agni Bomb once. Get my poke off. So you see how I'm like looking around pretty like all over the place. I'm trying to get a good read on this fight because it is a little questionable. We lost Gold Fury, but they used Thana ult. I did get some good poke with my ult and I got my three off, but is it a really good fight? I don't know. So that's why you don't see me full kidding, at, full running at anybody. I don't know if this is a great fight. And that's okay for you not to know. I see that Arachne's one shot. Alice is half. Cthulhu got ulted in the right side. I try to see if, Cthul Cthul if I can help Cthulhu. I call Thana on the left side. You see, look at my awareness there. How did I know Thana was there? The last time I saw him was right here when Hachi showed him a little bit. Oh, he showed right here for literally 0 0.5 seconds Thana showed. And I'm able to pick up on that, right? And call it, yo, Thana's behind, guys. And like, that allows you to make the right decision in terms of your positioning here. Thana behind, that's... And then I call that to, to, to Weaken, which allows him to reposition because he knows he's getting flanked. I get Coin Toss. I'm able to reposition again, right? If I, if, I didn't know Thano, if I didn't know Thano was behind me, I'm probably playing like somewhere here and trying to get big damage off. But because I know Thano's behind me, I'm playing a little bit more conserved. I'm waiting for my opening. This is what it's all about as a mage. It's positioning good enough to eventually when the team, the opponent or the enemy team groups up, you're there with your spells up to really pump damage because that's what you're all about. Oh, that's so much damage. A lot of Aegis's. Oh. Behind, Thana. He missed side, as usual. 
there's spiders on him. There's two people walking. Oh, there's spiders, guys! <laughs> He's so mad. I'm gonna fucking one shot this low. fucking thing. Yeah. Okay. Now let's look at this fight. I'm coming in. We're pulling fire. I don't know how low it is. I don't know. I haven't seen, right? In game, I probably knew, but I'm seeing Thanos showing himself on my ward, meaning I feel confident to move up because I see the one guy that can get the jump on me, right? That's what mid's all about. Finding the guy that can jump you and making sure you, you, you know where he's at. When you know where he's at, you know how you can position. The problem is, is people, they see tanks in front of them and they just forget about everything else. They just say, oh, let me just full cast on this tank with no reaver or low pen. No, that's wrong. Yo, Mr. Thanks for the eight months. Really appreciate it. You like my Thor game for Summit? Well, you're dunking him over and over. I feel bad for him at a certain point. Peace out, motherfucker. I one shot. I one shot the Thana. It is really good. So, even after I one shot the Thana, right? I don't V line straight into the pit. Why? Because I don't know where the Agni is either. I see Najan. I know Thana's dead here. Peace out, motherfucker. And then Agni shows here, and I don't have any spells, right? So, I'm going to space out. And look, he looks for me, cause I, and, and he can't catch me because I space out. Because I know the fight isn't over. Now I'm starting to think, okay, the fight is in a really good spot. Two dead, and we're on FG. So now I come up again. He dashes. Yeah, he dashed, he dashed. Two bombs. Another thing you should be doing is counting, num counting like CDs, like you would in you know, Mortal Kombat or any fighting game. Oh my god, it was a one up. I know Agni's out of this fight, so now I can full cast on Zeus and just get on top of him. No Agni, no Thana. So, I could have Aegis this, so I go to cast, right? Because I'm calling to end the game here. But I know it's gonna sack. I'm gonna sack Agni bombs hitting me. So I know I have to use one relic here. It could have been Aegis. Aegis would have been high value. I bees instead and look to turn. He ends up getting one shot because I cast my three waiting for his Aegis. Because I know you can't cast a spell right after the Aegis. So the animation is too long. Get that kill. I'm counting my timers. I'm looking up. If you can see, I'm looking up here at the Thana. Thana just spawned, right? I have ages. Just get away from me. Get away from me. I end up killing the Scotty, which is chain lining off the minions. I actually have a bad ages. Oh, he sucks. And then the rest is history. Let's go. Oh my god. I'll now let's talk about jungle, because jungle is a very, very tricky one. In my opinion, the most tricky in terms of positioning. That never happened. So I'm getting gone on here, right? Let's look at the map first oh. off the bat. So I miss Ash. Sobex on left side. That's actually... Wait, I'm looking... A blue. Okay, Sobex is your soul later, right? Naja definitely needs a lot of positioning. So I'm looking at this Merc. I think he has Blink or something. He grabs me. I hear Achilles, right? So I know I have to ult, right? Because I have no backup anywhere soon. Like anytime soon, right? So I'm forced to ult here, not because I'm trying to kill him, because I'm trying to avoid taking too much damage before the fight starts with Achilles already charging up his two and his one. So I ult. He, so now I trade my ult and for Mercury Dash and Achilles one, meaning their damage is low, and my and I'm still fine. A nice coin toss to finish that, and now I know it's run it run it down time. So. Another th quick tip that I'll give you with Naja is a lot of people are going to try to juke you, right? All your spells are not easy to land, so he has to make a decision. A or B, right? My team is behind him, so he's going to be forced to make one. So I'm not, you know, I could have sashed here and fucked up. I'm going to let him juke into the spot. You know, he went for the juke, but it's not, I, I, was, I was playing it as well. And now this is a free fight, right? Now we're just trying to full commit onto the Sobek, waiting for my sash. One thing here is coin toss off the Bastion into a Sash. No ult into a Mulan 3. That was beautiful. Into good body blocks. Boom, boom, pow. Free fight. So Mercury is playing behind. One thing to notice, there's a sentry here. Right? And what does this sentry mean? It means that they don't know that I know that they're there. Much better than a normal ward. So I, that's why I call for the gank. 
Look for Merc. Look for Merc. Achilles shows on a ward. And I ward low. So I know Mercury here. Achilles here. Heim really far away. So I can play very aggressive here. I look for him. Find him. On the back end. Sash and ult. Get in front of his dash. Dice to carry on ult. And now we're full casting on the Achilles. I try. I sash. So if you time the sash at the end of the ult. You can time it perfect. So I'm able to hit right after the ult. Into some autos here. Into a coin toss. Nice. I should have seven. I should have I should have all kill participation right now. Slide into an ult. Max range. Blink ult. Beautiful. Look for a coin toss as soon as the Sobe comes to help. Look for a sash right after the knockup. I'm near tower, so I'm not in a good spot. I get raw ulted. Did not expect that raw ult, but I don't panic. I then look for my out, my way out, right? If I separate from this Mulan, then the Raw has to make a decision. Me or Mulan, right? That's the most important thing to do. Sometimes I see people just follow the person that they're low HP. No, no, no. Separate. Make them pick one. We're in a bad spot. We're on their side of the jungle. I get Raw to did not expect it. He goes for the Raw too. I space out as far as I can just so I don't get slowed and blind. I bees, even though I don't even think I got slowed. So that was actually a bad bees there. Then I coin toss him just to get extra movement speed and then look for a, a sash out here. So I look for the soul bag. Then re two regrowth. Any raw would look for a one in a, in, a, in, a, in a path right here, right? So I don't want to give him a free path because most people are going to walk straight like this. So I gave him something to think about. I go out, in, and then he uses raw one. Then I use the little circle to give me that extra movement speed on top of regrowth. To get back to my Charon because I hear ult, his ult's coming. I even used the wave a little bit for extra movement speed. Now, I know I'm in an okay position to come back in this fight. All my CDs up, are up again. Hit a crazy coin toss off the Thoth root. And then Thoth hits double one that blows him up. Feels good. And now, it's a run it down mode. Why? All, everyone's dead but Raw and Heim. Heim shows on the minimap. He TP'd over. Raw is it. Difference of play here in this game then Roz goes to his tower as anyone would i let him over juke my spells are up yes but let him over juke he's gonna have the juke thoughtful or th thought ability so look for that opportunity find it here he beats auto chase aegis this glance back is what allows me to kill raw here because i look at him and i'm trying to get a read on him to see okay does he want to chase me and you know he does and which gives me a free ring bounce Oh my god, someone put that guy on a goddamn poster! And then that happened. <laughs> so, this fight looks okay. Merc's already dead, so it's a kind of full-blown run it down. That's an Achilles ult that I chase with my ult. It goes a little bit farther. That was pretty sick. Coin toss off Bastion. You know it's money. And look for another Sash. Space out. That was a big one, right? So, Raw is all about prediction right since he has no setup so i coin toss boom 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 and i see him looking this way as because he knows i'm gonna chase his achilles so even a quick back step into a sash can make a world of a difference because now i'm sitting at 1900 hp instead of maybe you know 1200 man i look so good playing this game now we're going for the chase i actually shouldn't have killed that minion because it's a free coin toss value he beads and ages, look, looking to commit. Oh, there it was. Nice. I even said it after. Make, let him over juke until eventually the sash is there. Take care, King. Have a good one, bro. What's up, Alex? And now there's only one, two people left. I still have beads for Heimel. Just get the sash and then reposition. Don't need to just keep autoing him. Autoing him isn't the highest value. I don't hit that hard. Two regrowth. Into another sash. That speeds. Space out. Let Zhang tank. Look for the coin toss. Bam. Looking for a siege as a jungler. But Naja is a bit different because this is a hybrid Naja. Hybrid Naja plays a bit different than normal assassins. Because positioning as an assassin is very important to just be getting flanks. Have sentries. Sentry your flank. Then you know your flank is safe to do so. And then look for them. I talk a lot about this in my coaching videos. If you guys want to watch my Lancelot coaching videos or Willix or Thor... They start to hit me pretty hard with the coin toss. I mean, with the high models with XE. Sash, the front line. Now he's in trouble. Space back out. Sustain. 
look for a coin toss make sure i'm full moving speed at this point but know that there's nothing else to get at this point so come back look for the two now we're gonna have the siege right there's gonna be three people alive for this it's gonna be a 4v3 with two minutes and a half of fg you see processing all of that is gonna allow me to make the right decisions here on who i'm gonna stun who i'm gonna go on and what am i gonna do here right so three people up mercs up an 11 he probably has all it's a 4v3 no fg i mean sorry fg for three minutes M wave coming in so back door is down so i start hitting start pressuring sobe goes in right away he raw goes for all on me again but i do some weird positioning there throw the sobe up because i know he has no buddies left and this is a guaranteed kill at this point and ends up catching him look for the the raw at the back end have a coin toss so i know i got that extra movement speed and i and look because I thought about, yo, Merc is spawning soon, I knew when I got all of those kills, it wasn't just, oh, let's go back, let's live, or let me back here. No, I know Merc's looking for that ult, so I'm going to try to reposition, and I use this pillar for my, for my safety. He then dashes out, I try getting my back off. He hits the one, I know he has no dash, right? He then looks for the Merc ult, gets a short one. I look to help him with the sash, I think I missed this one if I'm not mistaken. I still have blink though. Land the coin toss, regrowth, I think I live, 40 HP, FG heal, plus prots. Let's talk about an assassin like Naja sieging an FG. Mercury mid, Heim just spawned. We got a lot of time here to work with. We have really good wards, so we're able to see them coming. Merc is coming through red. You see, I don't need to see my character model hitting the FG. That's the last thing you should be worried about. You don't need to think about these things. These things should be natural. Should be very easy. You're looking at what's coming. Sobek, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't account for, right? I just accounted for Merc. So Sobek came out of nowhere, meaning Raw could be there too. Meaning their steel is near. So if I'm smart here, I should be running this way looking for the Raw. So let's see how quick I am on my toes here. So I look at the Sobek, no ult. Achilles flooding in. Heim defends right. I look back for the Sobek again because we got off FG. And just take the guaranteed kill with my ult. Coin toss off FGs. Easiest book, easiest trick in the book, sorry. Max range sash, have that extra movement speed from regrowth. Look for the kill, there's an XE. Reposition, because I know I don't need to suicide here. I have a lot of sustain through my two. Get my heal off. Look for the sash. The guy hits the sick ult. One person left, Heim was right. Everybody's accounted for here. Now, this is the emoji solo, pretty weird, I know. But, we're going to talk about solo positioning. And how solo is all about zoning and making sure people are not able to play, backliners are not able to play comfortable, right? So here, I'm looking for the cage on the, on the, on the Arachne, but it's low value, right? Because she just trades her ult for my ult, which is bad because my ult has a way longer CD. So I don't take that trade. And I look for maybe for the Athena. She gets, hits a good taunt. Nice, nice insta grab because she can ult in that timing. What four for four? Cage as we're getting ulted for more Omi. Really, that wasn't in, to try to kill. I, I was just running out of Omi and I felt like we needed we needed help there. I have I'm so dr'd. This guy's dead on the left side. I turn back on this guy. The emoji is a little bit different because you're always like you know looking both forward and backwards. It actually is way higher level of uh positioning than any solo right because solo in my opinion is actually the easiest to position in uh for example when you're playing any character of, of sorts like odin right you can kind of just stay in their face for free uh you don't really get punished emoji actually takes a lot more looking behind looking in front looking behind looking in front i got heals do i use a three i use a three here to pop him over into a stun that felt good look for a two shield hit him i should be leveling the shield there beautiful so I lost a little bit of value. I did miss that too, unfortunately. But it looks like we're just going to end up fragging him. Got enough Omi for a three soon. But he's, gonna, he's obviously going to make a decision on where he's going to go. Is he going to go wide? Like Try to give him a nice little three here to give him some juice. But I don't think we're going to end up catching him either way. Yeah, not enough Omi. Oh, we got vision on Ethel. Nice. I try to get the bounce to cut him off, which it ends up doing. So then I can just get the free auto off. Mystical mail too. This is solely emojis, so the things you see don't try at home. This is an Artemis just getting soloed. Doesn't have too much with positioning. 
the only thing that I'm looking at here in terms of positioning is I know I know I was waiting very patiently for this Artemis to go wrap around her purple. I see Zheng in left. I see Arachne on mid camps. Athena dead. This guy is completely alone. And so I just look for the angle. Look for the slow. I actually should have had better body blocks with pre beads. That would have been the most perfect play. But you know it is what it is. We still ended up hitting the one. Just keep hitting ones over the head there. And that's goner. Here I'm still looking for prophetic stack, so the Jing is just running away from me. Pretty smart. Two dead right now. I'm just gonna trade to get prophetic. I'm actually capped out on magic stack, so I won't be able to do much there. Who just invited me? Rama. I actually just said that in the video. I think this is the wrong character for solo, but it's okay. We got a call in or something. I wonder if they can kill me. They might be able to. It's fine. So I call out another thing about solo is that you're able to use your items a little bit more. And what do I mean by that? You're able to counter build a little bit better when you're when you're jungle, you're forced to go Joins, Trans, Hydras, Budforge, Heartseeker, Serrated, these items, right? In tank, you're able to counter build a bit more, right? Look, look at their items. Do I need anti heal? Do I need CD? Do I need spirit robe because they have a lot of stun? Do I need mantle because when they do lock me down, I'm guaranteed dead like Persephone? Do I need... Uh, mystical meal for extra damage since I'm kind of safe and I, I know I'm gonna be on top of them a lot like so though Solo is a lot more about counter building and then playing off your counter build on how to, with, with positioning So for example, you go mystical meal you go breastplate guard shield. What is that three fist pro items meaning what don't try to zone the mage bro zone the Hunter or assassin that is your job. You see, the problem is, is people don't play off their builds in solo. They build whatever, double magical prop, then try to face tank a hunter. You can't. You physically can't. That's just bad play. So doing doing things of that sort, playing off your items in solo is very, very important. It's what you watch the best solo laners. That's what they do. They zone the person that they build for. Athena ult, I knew I just had to stun my feet there. She can't kill me at this point. Just drop a couple autos for Omi. Look for three. This guy should live. Our acne comes. I space out. She's on beacon. Either way, guys, I hope you guys learned something about how to position in every single role. I try my best to break it down with different type of videos. If you guys uh, like the video, make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.